On a cold, wintry Saturday evening, the 2nd of February 1963, Mr Carroll, the station master at Tralee, greeted J.J. McCarthy, who had just driven the last regular passenger train from Limerick, thus ending a service that had been provided for over 82 years. It was the beginning of the end of the North Kerry line. From now on, the line would only carry goods, cattle and the occasional passenger train. This presentation will now document the final years of the railway, the failure to keep the rails in situ, the initial state effort to reuse the line as Ireland's first greenway, a proposal abandoned as a result of opposition, but eventually successfully rescued by the Great Southern Trail Action Group. As the video unfolds, you will see highs and lows of the campaign, from ministerial openings to scenes of destruction, vandalism, blockades and obstruction. From the preservation of environment and heritage to the irreplaceable losses of historic features. However, thanks to the irrepressible spirit and enthusiasm of the Ganaudini, the ordinary people who walked through the most inhospitable terrain, week after week success was eventually ours. Restoration and improvement works became commonplace thanks to local generosity and the renewed interest of officialdom. The Great Southern Trail was also promoted at home and abroad as the stalwart supporters travelled throughout Ireland and mainland Europe. Their campaign and dedication attracted awards, including one from the European Greenways Association. Television and radio programmes were recorded and a number of publications launched, including the definitive history of the railway by Dr Alan O'Rourke in 2013. We now rejoin the North Kerry Railway Line as the last ever steam train, filled with railway enthusiasts, travelled the route on the 3rd and 4th of June, 1972. All aboard! <coughs> Passing Patrick's Well, we see the line which used to go to Charleville until it closed in 1967. At Ballingran, the Fines line continued straight on while we curved sharply left from Atkeel and Arda. We pass Arda, the home of the chalice. At Newcastle West, Terminus, the train changed tracks and headed left under the bridge for Tralee. It then climbed the steep hill which led to the top of Barna, passed through the tunnel and paused at Barna station. Beyond Barna, it is downhill along the track, which opened in 1880. It had only taken five years to construct the 69 kilometres, 43 miles, from Newcastle West to Tralee. The train now enters Tullig Wood, today one of the highlights of the Great Southern Trail. A few miles further on, the train pauses at Abbey Field. We meet it again west of Le Stole as it passes through the small stations of Lixnaw, Abidorne and Artfert.
we see some of them again on the return journey. The train crosses the river Field on a fine bridge near Fenug. Our next scene is at Kilmorna, a tiny station located between Listol and Abbey Field. Now we see the veteran engine working hard as it climbs through Tullig Wood, onwards through Temple Lantern Parish to Barmer. Who can relax as the train begins to run downhill to Newcastle? Our final images are of Ratkeel and Adair, where the train crosses the River Mag and continues to Limerick. Three years after the steam train, Newcastle saw its last passenger train, which went to a match in Tullus. And finally, at Halloween in 1975, the discharge of a solitary wagon of cement held at the final farewell, which was given by a group of CIE staff. Similar scenes were enacted in Listowel just 14 months later, when locomotive 045 departed with the last train Actually. The line then lay dormant for the next 10 years, apart from an annual weed spray. As rumours spread that the tracks would be ripped up, 
the Limerick and Kerry Railway Society was formed in an endeavour to protect and reopen the line. John Whelan spent 33 years of his life working on the railway as a signalman and parcels clerk. Made redundant when Newcastle West Station closed 10 years ago, he finds the railway bug as virulent as ever and devotes his retirement to fighting for the restoration of the Limerick Curry line. I am very glad to be a chairman of this society and uh, will be talking for retention and revitalization of the line, the 53 miles between Limerick and Tralee. From Ballangran, the founders of Methodism in North America, Philip Embury, and his cousin Barbara Heck, departed in the year 1760. Ballangran Junction now represents the starting point of the 53 miles of railway, which the Railway Society argue should be maintained as part of the vital infrastructure of the region. Surely everything you want done depends upon a massive injection of public funds. Uh, well, I don't subscribe to that in, in the first instance. And for example, if one looks at uh, the other side of uh, the transportation point, looks look, look to the roads, for example, uh, they are enormously expensive. And uh, we're not looking for uh, care and maintenance uh, in the first instance of this line wouldn't entail massive uh, expenditure of funds. Uh, one estimate would, uh, would uh, indicate that a million pounds would go a long way in re uh, restoring the line. The CIA will reopen the Limerick Curry Railway only if the board sees good commercial reasons for doing so. The future for us, like is, the Limerick Curry Railway Society believes that this railway line, just 53 miles from Ballin Grand Junction to Tralee, is the vital link for the infrastructure of North Kerry and West Limerick. We think it has a tremendous tourist potential. And even only a few weeks ago, we had a letter back from the Minister for Transport saying that he fully agreed with our sentiments and that he suggested a feasibility study which he would grant aid. But then the this was not to be, and the dereliction became demolition, with the railway tracks being lifted over the next three years. Some of the rails were exported from Fines to the Sudan as part of Ireland's aid to the third world. However, Shannon Development, the local state agency charged with tourism development, saw the potential of converting the abandoned railway into a greenway. They commissioned a study of the idea from the Bristol-based Sustrans Group, who were experts in the field, and they heartily endorsed the notion. A concerted campaign by a number of adjoining landowners and residents against the proposal caused Shannon Development to hesitate. Walks along the Newcastle West to Arda route were organised by a group called Track Trek in the summer of 1990 to support the Greenway initiative, but despite this and other demonstrations of public support, Shannon Development walked away in June 1991. On the 4th of July 1991, the Great Southern Trail Action Group was formed at a public meeting in Newcastle West. On July the 28th, cyclists from the Stoll were met by 100 people at Ratkeel and on the 31st of August an information leaflet was launched at Barna Gardens by Jim Houlihan, Chairman of Limerick County Council, accompanied by Jim Kemi, Mayor of Limerick. In the summer of 1992, the Great Southern Trail invited Gordon Darcy, the environmentalist, to carry out a study of Tully Wood. It also promoted the trail at trade fairs throughout the area. In 1993, the Mayor of Limerick, John O'Sullivan, led a walk from Temple Glanton to Abbey Field with some refreshments and music afterwards. Also in 1993, Donegal Dooling led a big walk from Arda to Newcastle West and the Old Mill. In 1994, the Great Southern Trail began the clean-up of the track in the vicinity of Newcastle West with a weed spray and with the employment of students on the Summer Jobs Scheme. And the Minister, Michael Woods, came to inspect the finished work later in the year, in the month of September 1994. Unfortunately, two days after the ministerial visit, the new owners of the Newcastle West Railway Station demolished the goods store, which Shannon Development had intended to be a craft centre, and the Great Southern Trail had to pick it the railway station and the railway station house was preserved 
and restored some five years later. Signage for the Great Southern Trail was donated to the trail later in 1994 and some walks on the newly surfaced section by the students were carried out. In 1995 the Chairman of Limerick County Council Lady Creighton led another big walk on the trail and again the student summer job scheme uh, took place between Newcastle West and Arda in 1995. Here you see behind my back the students working on the summer job scheme in 1995 and in the distance the line to Arda where they will be hopefully reaching in a few weeks time. Now with me is Jim Ronan, Jim is from Newcastle West, the native of Monaghan and Jim is a great walker so Jim I'd like to ask you what does the walk mean to you? Well it means a great pleasure to walk the line here from Newcastle West to Arda. I'm very fond of walking all my life and I think it's a wonderful idea. In 1997, opponents of the trail damaged a bridge near Tully Wood. The trail had its ups and downs, and by 1999, walks were on a regular basis. This one is from Ratkeel to Newcastle West. where the group met outside the newly restored station house, much improved from the way it looked five years pre previously. However, in 1999, the bridge at the recycling centre Gwaleskull, Newcastle West, was demolished and the final walk under that bridge took place in the middle of August. Later in the year, in September, the group visited Barnet Tunnel. As the year 2000 dawned, you could see the condition of some of the track was less than desirable for walking, and there was more demolition, this time done by CIE to a bridge in Belly Pierce. And again, some of the track was uh, fairly overgrown and fairly dirty to traverse. This is a scene between Ratkeel and Ballingrand because in the year 2000 the Great Southern Trail walked every section of the line between the Kerry border and some parts in County Kerry and Ballingrand. The condition of the track was fairly overgrown as you can see in many areas. As the year drew to a close, Eddie Lenehan came to tell stories at Barna. Brother Anthony Keane, seen here on the right, led a group through Tullig Wood at the end of October in the year 2000. On the 3rd of November 2000, Brian Crowley MEP chaired a public meeting at Hall Lane, Siobhan, Templeton to debate the future of the Great Southern Trail. Supporters outnumbered opponents in the robust debate. Representatives of the Heritage Council and Sustrans attended. CIE, owners of the line, now supported the Greenway. The future looked much brighter than it had been. 
At Christmas 2000, what was to become the first of an annual Christmas walk in County Kerry took place from Blinneville to the Ballyroe Hotel. In 2001, the foot and mouth disease came to Ireland and as a result there was only one walk in that year and that was late in the year from Listowel to Finoog and the condition of the track was quite surprising and very difficult for those participating to traverse. It was hard to believe that this was and is the railway track. The pipe carries the fibre optic cable which runs along the line from Limerick to Tralee. Eventually the walkers got through and crossed the bridge near Fanoog and adjourned for refreshments afterwards. Many places and wonderful sights I've seen. As it was not possible to have walks during the summer of that year due to the foot and mouth, a trip in June took place in Belgium. This was to be the first of many trips abroad and to elsewhere in Ireland by the Great Southern Trail Action Group. They marvelled at what they saw and the fine greenways to be seen in mainland Europe. There was also time for some refreshments. Back in Ireland in the autumn of 2001, it was time to don the willies as we began to walk from Newcastle West to Arda, because this track was still in fairly poor condition at places. And uh, a few more walks continued in the autumn of the year. Alan O'Rourke, the author of the definitive book on the railway, visited. There was a walk from Sugar Hill to Timpeglanton and the Christmas walk, now becoming established, again took place from Blinneville to the Ballyroe Hotel, along the old track in Tralee. The line between Newcastle West and Arda had a number of obstacles on it, bales, water logging, and some very soft, muddy night material. This was all encountered by walkers who traveled that route at that time. Sylvia and Julian Reynolds visited in 2002 in the Ibarna area to carry out studies of the plants and animals in the area. It was time to go abroad again in June to Germany this time to the town of Castellon in the Rhineland area which became a base for the Great Southern Trail for three consecutive years. Their railway line was converted to a cycleway and their little pretty town with the lovely hotel was very popular with the Irish visitors. The Burgermeister seen here on the left welcomed the Irish group and explained how easily that they were able to convert their railway to a greenway. The Great Southern Trade people were also interviewed as they travelled the Rhine and visited the pretty towns along the Rhine. Back in Ireland in 2002, CIE came out to visit and saw the condition of the line between Newcastle and Arda. But in 2002, CIE gave a licence to the Great Southern Trail to develop the Newcastle to Arda section. Students from international volunteer groups came to help. Meanwhile, it was time to walk again to Kerry and visit Finoog once again. Alan O'Rourke and his wife Rose came to visit Barnet. Hmm. Stones were a feature down near Reens Pike and Arda obstructing the line. Eddie Lenehan appeared in Barney again with a bit of music and the development of the Newcastle Tardis section with contractors began to take place in the autumn of 2002. This was a walk on the line to Arda as the year drew to a close. More black bales in 2002, this time near Kilmorna in County Kerry. The Christmas walk again in Tralee. 
and the lady on the right, Carmen Lyons, lived in the station house in Newcastle West when her father was station master. In February 2003, 40 years after the last passenger train ran between Limerick and Tralee, there was a gathering of the railway families for the weekend with events taking place in Leans Hotel in Abbeville. A visit to Barnard Tunnel. The launching of an ecological study of Barnard Tunnel with the flora and fauna visit to Arda Station on a wet February afternoon from where the group walked to Newcastle West. This was the 40th anniversary of the last passenger train. At Newcastle West they were entertained by Don and Jan Quinn Freiburg, the owners of the restored station house. Later in the year, the group set off for County Down and walked the old Belfast and County Down Railway in the area of Dundrum. And this is Drum, Dundrum Bay on the right. The dawn chorus in May attracted a small but dedicated group who got up early to join Jeff Hunt on a visit to the Dar and the Arda line. In the summer it was off to Luxembourg, the Moselle Valley, a wine cellar, another scene at the Moselle, mode of transport for Mary Kennelly of Ratkeel. Meanwhile, Sylvia Reynolds was back in the Tullig Wood area in Barna, displaying the flora and fauna to the people. A new bridge was constructed at Tullig to replace the one that had been damaged in 1997. It was blessed by Father Hulley, the parish priest. by a good group of locals. Another bridge decking was done at the Dow just outside Newcastle West and the Heritage Council again visited Barna Tunnel and also took a look at the old Barna Station House now in a very bad state of repair. Christmas again, it was time to go to Tralee. This is the condition of the entrance to the Newcastle West Town Centre. But there was an improvement at the other side of the road. In 2004, the Great Southern Trail visited County Down. And here they are seen at Coultra, where the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum is held. In 2004, a group went to Arda for the International Trails Day in June. In August, Ella McSweeney of RTE came to Barna to interview and to record for her radio programme. Uh, work got ready in Newcastle West for the official opening of the Newcastle West to Arda section. And there was a clean up also of a bridge on the old Barna Road, restoring it to its original beauty. New signage was put up by the Great Southern Trail in advance of the opening of the section to Arda, which took place on the 15th of August 2004, with Tom Finn of CIE doing the honours. Later in the year, a group went from Barna to Glenquin Castle, another historic feature in County Limerick. And again, the Christmas walk in Tralee, the fifth annual one at this stage, took place 
as 2005 dawned, a group from the Valley Horrors came to visit Barna and Newcastle West. Michael Davies, seen here on the left, a renowned railway photographer, came to give a presentation at Newcastle West Library. The Great Southern Trail Group took a visit to County Derry on the banks of the Fyle. As summer came on, it was time to go to Spain. This is the rail trail near Barcelona. And trains were also used as part of the journeys within the country, in Catalonia. New steps were put in place in order for easier access to the trail. And Dennis Foley, the last man to work on the railway, was seen here at Tulliga Line with his faithful dog. As 2006 dawned, by the banks of the Alacorn near Abbey Field, a new trail was being developed. Minister Raymond O'Queeve came to visit and was impressed. The entrance to Newcastle West Town Centre still required a bit of further attention. Great Southern Trail Group visited Belik in County Fermanagh and also in 2006 the steam engine that hauled the train in 1972 was back in County Kerry this time between Killarney and Tralee 34 years on from its last visit to the North Kerry line Then it was off to Italy and more vintage material. This is in Alatri near Rome. This is at Monte Cassino. And the group were based in Fuji, a spa town outside Rome, and cycled and walked the local rail trail in that area, which had been suffering from some summer floods. Here are more, more, more scenes from the Italian visit. And then in the late year, a uh, new signage was put in place at Barna. But first this evening, we're heading down south to the Southern Trail, a walkway uh, over some 53 miles of countryside in West Limerick and North Kerry. It takes the route of what used to be the railway linking uh, Tralee and uh, Limerick. And our Marion Malone took to the tracks to see what that route has to offer. It's Sunday morning and at the former Newcastle West Railway Station a new phase of the Great Southern Trail is being launched. The trail extends from Ballangrain in County Limerick to Tralee in County Kerry. Four generations of my family have been, have worked for down with the railways all through the years, the, the Murphys, the Whelans and the Dunnemans. And it's a pleasure to be here and to see that uh, the railway hasn't come to an end. For 16 years, the Great Southern Trail Action Group has worked tirelessly and on a voluntary basis to transform the old railway line into a nature trail haven for walkers, hikers and cyclists. Well, we are here in the eastern part of Timber Lantern. Um, this is a bridge that the committee erected back in, 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 in the late 90s. And um, basically, this is part of the sort of, a part of the Southern Trail, which is very panoramic and has wonderful um, offerings are from a health perspective and from a nature perspective and this is one a prime example of success in what can be done with an old railway line. I was appointed here in 1944 and I spent 47 years here maintenance from Tralee to Newcastle West. For some years we had short stretches uh, but now lately we've developed a full eight miles from a place called Barna to Abbeyfield and if you want to know, you can obviously trek the full eight miles and ideally 
what I'd like to do and what I've done sometimes is do the full loop. You can do some lovely quiet roads here as well. Well, my family and I have been using the trail for a few years now. Usually we would have been walking, but recently we've taken to cycling because it's ideal. For a long time we couldn't go cycling with the children because of the safety aspect. So this is perfect for between the, the, the lack of noise and the safety and the lovely views back the road there, the country views, because we live in the town, so it is lovely to get out and cycle through the countryside. It makes use of an old uh, disused rail line uh, for recreational purposes, for walking, for hiking. It's for there for all the communities and villages to enjoy, from people all over to come and enjoy it, to come for a walk, come for a cycle and it's uh, entirely in keeping with the whole idea of recreational trails and uh, a trail network all over the country. The rail trail has become a traffic-free recreation route of interest to heritage, environmental and leisure tourists. And it's a treasure trove of flora and fauna. The development of this railway track is fantastic. We have um, a safe place where we can observe the wildlife in, in, in Ireland. You're away from the dangers of the traffic and the noise. The wildlife, has, since the railway track has closed, the, uh, the, the plants have overtaken, the insects are eating the plants, providing food for birds and nesting. Um, here at Barna Tunnel, we have the raven that nests. They've been nesting here for many years, and the bats in the tunnel. We've found uh, nine species of bats so far. It's fantastic. The people of the community are taking to this walkway very, very rapidly and they're beginning to take more enjoyment. And as I said, it's a, a facility because of the gradients of railways, it's available to all people of all ages and abilities. Of course, we're not going to sit in our laurels having completed this latest phase of the work because we think that as more and more people will use it, the people in the rest of West Limerick and in North Kerry will want to see the other 30 something miles of the rail trail developed as well. And so it's onwards from here full steam ahead for the next phase of the project. 2007 was a very eventful year for the Great Southern Trail. Father Leo MacDonald blessed the Abbey Field to Barnes section, which was opened by Eamon O'Queeve on the 31st of May. There was a very representative attendance at that event. Later in the year, work continued in the Gary Duff area between Barna and Newcastle West. The nearby viaduct had to be cordoned off and it would receive attention in the coming years. This fine stone bridge is a typical example of the railway masonry skills and it's at Gary Duff. The contractor Declan Stack, seen here on the left, then diverted his attention to the Newcastle West to Arda section as 2007 drew to a close. And here we see the site of the old Arda Creamery on the right again as you approach Arda Station. The gate at Arda Station shows that the section from Arda to Rackie is still awaited development. And this is a view of the old Arda Station house. As we move into 2008, uh, the area in the vicinity of Newcastle West was resurfaced in the direction of Barna. Now the public also see the true benefits of a clean, well-maintained trail. By 2009, further progress was made. CIE fabricators redecked the Gallyduff Viaduct. Funding had been sourced by Limerick County Council for developing the entire Newcastle West to Barnes section. Work took place in the vicinity of the viaduct on the Barnes side and on the Newcastle side. This is at Drummond level crossing. Here we see work at Churchtown level crossing near the Newcastle to Old Mill Road and at Newcastle West again the new surface on both the Arda line on the right and the Barna line on the left. The bridge at Bally Pierce which was demolished in 2000 is replaced in 2009. OBNK stands for Overbridge North Kerry, the 55th bridge on the line. Another bridge on the line which had been demolished by a truck accidentally was very generously replaced by Mike Condon 
of uh, Devon Road and it showed the true spirit of the people of Temple Glenton which has always been to the fore in the trail. We will recall that back in 1992, at the very outset of the trail campaign, it was the Tullig Wood that Gordon Darcy, the environmentalist, went to see the flora and the fauna. So great credit has always been due to the people of that parish for their dedication to the project. Finally, in 2009, Newcastle West Town Centre was linked to the trail with a proper surface. And here we see the completed viaduct works. In 2010, Des Moore of the Department of Rural Recreation came to visit the Arda to Rakeel section and he was followed by his minister Pat Carey who was seen here at Arda. Throughout 2010, work continued by the Great Southern Trail in developing the section from Arda to Ratkeel and giving a continuous trail between Ratkeel and Abbeyfield at that stage. During the summer there were a number of walks including one at Barnard Tunnel which is held annually to celebrate Heritage Week. And here is a view of the plains of County Limerick from the Barnard Layby. In October of 2010 a very large group gathered in Newcastle West and set out on a walk to Ratkeel along the newly surfaced trail. Here we see a seat which was one of a number that has been donated by uh, generous sponsors along the route and one of the bridges at Skahana on the Arda Reens section. Here is Mike Mulcahy of Reens and there's a bridge at Ballinlinny. work was still progressing while the walk was taking place. The contractor Declan Stack is here on the right. And this is Ratkeel Station House. One relic of the bad old days still hung on for a while. And here we see the Arda station which awaits redevelopment. By 2011, new signage was being put in place along the route. And this recalled the history of the railway. At Arda, Father Madden was in hand to unveil. And there was a big walk held between Ratkeel and Abbey Field in midsummer 2011. Andrew Geraghty on the left lived in the Newcastle Station House until 1974. Mary Carmody was given a presentation at the Barna Gardens. All this was part of the big walk for midsummer. Dennis Foley was in hand to unveil the sign at Devon Road. He was the last man to have worked on the railway. In July 2011, the Great Southern Trail went to Westport to see the opening of the Great Western Greenway. Met the Taoiseach and the Kenny and Minister Michael Ring. Here we see people enjoying the Ratkeel to Arda section, having been brought by Phelan's coach house travel to Ratkeel. Minister Jimmy Deanahan, and seen here with Don Freiburg of the Newcastle Station House on the left, I uh, led a walk from Newcastle West to Barna. To celebrate Heritage Week in 2011. It was great to see the Barna Tunnel is now accessible for bikes and buggies. The national flag was flying at Barna to honour the Minister's visit. Later in 2011, the Great Southern Trail were honoured with an award in Epinal in France for their endeavours in developing the Great Southern Trail. The Great Southern Trail is a member of the European Greenways Association. Back in Newcastle West, it was time for another walk to Ratkeel. Here we see the walkers at Arda, with some dogs and bikes. 
and the maintenance of the trail is in the hands of TOOS and Rural Social Scheme and Community Employment Schemes. As 2011 came to a close, a cycle lane was developed near the N21 at Ratkeel and an underpass under the, under the N21 alongside the River Deal was put in place to ensure that the walkers from Ratkeel would no longer have to cross the main road. In the background we see the old railway bridge that carried the railway into Ratkeel. A similar site claim was installed by Limerick County Council under the Smarter Travel Project at Barna to keep the cyclists and walkers away from the busy traffic on the N21. Another day with another walk from Newcastle West. And with all the modernisation, the old telegraph poles still survive here and there. By 2012, the Great Southern Trail was present at a West Limerick tourism event. The Great Southern Trail also participated in a walk in Fenet, where the campaign to develop the Tralee Fenet line is continuing apace. There was also a walk from Temple Glanton to Abbey Field, which was a taster and a kind of an exercise run for the big walk, which took place again in midsummer 2012. Here we see the gathering setting out from Rat Keel. Along the route we met some cyclists from the Polish-Irish community and at the destination in Abbey Field the tired but happy participants were presented with their certificates to prove that they had indeed travelled the entire route from Ratkeel to Abbey Field. The restoration of the Devon Road station house has been much appreciated by everybody that passes by and admires the beautiful stonework. At the other side of Tullygwood, the wooden bridge of 2003 has now been replaced by a new metal structure. For Heritage Week in 2012, a large group gathered at Barnet Tunnel, walked the whole way to Arda, where the West Limerick Vintage Club provided a demonstration of stone crushing and old vintage machinery. In the adjoining hall in Arda, a new brochure extolling the virtues of the Great Southern Trail was launched by Jerome Scanlon Cahillac of Limerick County Council. In autumn 2012, Limerick County Council commenced route clearance from Abbey Field to the Kerry border. The Great Southern Trail attended the European Cycling Greenway Conference in Nantes, France. The work to the border was complete by year's end and included a new bridge at Abbey Field. The first walk and cycle on the new section took place after Christmas. In January 2013 the GST and the CIE engineer examined the line from the border to Kilmorna to check it out for future walks. It was like revisiting the 1990s. Amazing that some people who consider walkers and cyclists to be trespassers have no problem trespassing themselves and putting black bales etc on the track. The 50th anniversary of that last daily passenger train was marked on the 2nd of February 2013 with a walk scheduled to cross the border, go through the neglected section and end in Dua. This was not to be as a border confrontation blocked onward passage. Despite a guard of presence, the objectors wouldn't budge. Later in February, Transport Minister Leo Varadkar became the fifth government minister to visit the Great Southern Trail when he opened the Abbey Field to the Border section. Spring walks followed. Kerry visitors came to Abbey Field. 
There's Walken Ratkeel, another in Ruska, In May, a large group congregated in the stall and set out towards the old station in Kilmorna. Unfortunately, they had to walk along the public road even though they were only a few miles from the old railway. The big walk in June saw some Kerry visitors as well. The big walk went and cycle went from Abbey Field to Ratkeel. In July, CIO officials came to visit the Kerry section of the Great Southern Trail. Back to Newcastle West. An old railway signal was erected by Great Southern Trail volunteers in September of 2013. This is a reminder to the people of the town of the railway era. group from the Great Southern Trail went to County Wicklow by rail to Artlow, then on to see the meeting of the waters. Glendalock and the old railway walk at Tinney Healy. A number of publications by the Great Southern Trail began in 1994 with a review of the route and attractions along the way. Then in 1997, the survey of attitudes to the trail. In 2002, a study of the plants, animals and birds. And in 2013, the book, The North Kerry Line. The author, Alan O'Rourke, seen here on the left, being interviewed by Brian O'Connell at the Kerry border and Michael Gearden, uh, took a drive on the old Arteague Railway replica at Listowel, where Jimmy Deanahan launched the book in County Kerry. Eamon O'Queeve launched a book in Newcastle West Library. In 2014, the big walk again operated from Abbey Field to Ratkeel for the 40 kilometres. Dominic Dridham Condera or Glorinish. A fakem to know, sir, Hora or Sehari Gunta Limni. A talk creakna her going for Yerra. Tasula Gwingal and Oigan da Ober Trust Chorni Dushkar Kiri. Agus Gaveki she had Nabuntashti a winning less than glass for Lakshaw than counter Margord. A scar Kela a Van Nadina.
Today, the fruits of the quarter century voluntary campaign are being enjoyed throughout the 40 kilometres in West Limerick. And hopefully the day is not too far away when the Greenway will be extended to both Limerick City and to Listole, Tralee and Feenit by public demand. Ní nát go cúrla cúrla. There has always been a great affinity between West Limerick and North Kerry and the fact that an administrative county boundary is delaying development of the Greenway westwards from Abbey Field is surely at variance with the wishes of the vast majority of the people. To illustrate what binds us together, we end with a ballad composed by the stole-born Gary McMahon, who lived most of his life in Newcastle West, County Limerick. Uh, the summers were fine and the bright sun did shine In those days of my youth I now fondly recall The songs and the stories, the hard-earned glories I gleaned with my trusty come on. My dear parents' faces, a trip to the races On the line to Listall in the steam engine train The leaves keep on falling, sweet voices are calling Come back to Newcastle again